everybody. Chad Westport here, and we're back with another edition of Just One Thing. And today, I've got an awesome grower who has traveled the world setting up different grow systems, but he's decided to come here tonight to share with us his Just One Thing he thinks that all new growers should know about. So please, without further ado, let me turn it over to you, Potent Phonics. Please say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. How's it going today? Hope you're having a good time. Today we're going to learn about pH. So let me get this queued up here. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm glad to always make uh, content with you. We had a fun time uh, a little while ago doing that uh, longer format uh, aquaponics episode. It's exciting to do a, a short with you and try to educate people on some misunderstood topics out here in uh, the cannabis realm around pH. So today we're going to talk about pH and how to adjust it when you're mixing your nutrient solutions um, so that you actually have uh, the proper range for your minerals are actually fully available. Because if the pH gets too high or too low, um, your nu nutrients aren't available anymore. Um, so in a hydroponic or aquaponic solution, you generally want a 6.4 to 6.8 uh, pH. Uh, and then in soil, you're looking at like a 6 to 6.4, depending on exactly your, your methodology. So uh, we're going to talk about as well, pH uh, can dip and, and rise over time. Uh, especially over the course of the daytime nighttime cycle. So if you're seeing a 0.2 uh, change or less in a hydroponic and aquaponic system from daytime to nighttime, that's totally normal, nothing to worry about. If you're seeing a larger fluctuation than that, it could mean that your alkalinity is out of range. And we're gonna talk about that here in a couple of slides, um, but there is a big difference between pH and, and alkalinity. Um, uh, neutral water is, is a seven pH, uh, a, a pH of zero is acidic and a pH of 12 is alkaline. Um, just so you can kind of see, and it's logarithmic. So a uh, pH of uh, seven to six, the six is 10 times more acidic than the seven. Um, and then the five is a hundred times more uh, acidic than the, um, the seven and so on and so forth. So it's extremely important for your uh, cation exchange as well. Uh, if, again, if your pH is, is out of range. So as you can see here, um, this is the availability of different nutrients. Uh, and you can see the vast majority of them are available from between about 6.2 to about 6.6 .6 is where you have the largest range of nutrient availability and an aqueous solution for your plants. So you can see it as well, even in the upper fives, you still have a pretty good range uh, and that can exclude some certain pathogens and other issues if you have it at that lower pH. But it, all in all, having that lower alkalinity uh, which is required uh, in a lower pH environment, um, very much hinders your microbial replication. If the alkalinity is too low, it hinders how quickly your microbes can replicate because there's not enough free carbon in the water for them to create new tissue. Um, so they can certainly become a limiting factor uh, later on. So that's why it's extremely important to make sure you maintain it in this range rather than allowing it to swing you know, much out of it. Your plants and uh, you know, if you're keeping fish as well, uh, can die extremely quickly if the pH is off significantly, or if you watered in a pH of water that was radically different than what the soil is, that plant's going to freak out. So for raising your pH, we've really found the best combination is potassium silicate and calcium carbonate. Um, either alternating those or doing a combination of about 60% potassium silicate to 40% calcium carbonate by volume. Um, dosage is very similar in terms of dosing them as adjusters. Um, you can get potassium silicate in a liquid form uh, uh, at any hydro store. Um, uh, you, uh, and then uh, you can also get it in a powdered form as well. Uh, same thing with the calcium carbonate, any you know, garden center is gonna have that uh, available for your plants. Uh, uh, powdered form is uh, uh, very, you know, preferred. Um, stuff that we don't like to use is potassium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide. Um, potassium carbonate is okay to use if you have to. Um, a potassium bicarbonate is also okay if you have to, but um, we, we tend to prefer to use the potassium silicate as our potassium input for pH up just because we're trying to also get those silica uh, levels up as well. If your silica levels aren't high enough, that can make the plants much more vulnerable to molds and mildews and, and insect attack. It also will make them more sensitive to heat and cold stress. So if you're in an environment with a lot of hot or cold um, you know, at a particular time of the season, if your silica is not there, your plants will have a much, much harder time dealing with that. And they'll have a much higher expression of stress hormones based around um, uh, uh, the temperature reaction. Um, now for pH down for smaller solutions, we uh, actually really like lactobacillus, especially we're trying to stick to organic solutions. Uh, lactobacillus uh, at a rate of one to 1000 will lower your pH by 0.2% or uh, by 0.2, I'm sorry, uh, uh, pH. So uh, at a one to 1,000 ratio, you can lower your pH by 0.2, just so that you know, as far as 
uh, acidity. So you can, you know, adjust that if you need more, you can add more than that, um, or, you know, add one to 500 if you need to do 0.4, so on and so forth. Um, and then phosphoric acid is another good one that's very plant friendly because you're adding phosphorus to the system, which oftentimes people need to add a little bit. Uh, and then if you need to do a larger adjustment without adding a secondary nutrient supplementation, or, you know, you don't really need labs, you already dosed labs for the week, um, muriatic acid is much better, especially if you're adjusting for a pH of above 7.5, uh, as it does a much better job of burning through those higher alkalinity values and higher pH values. Um, don't use vinegar. It tends to cause uh, all kinds of microbial and um, uh, uh, pH issues, and it's not as stable. Um, citric acid occasionally is recommended. Uh, we found that you have to add significantly more citric acid, um, even though it is an organically certifiable version of it. There's a bio, uh, well, probably shouldn't mention companies, but there's um, uh, certain companies that sell citric acid out there that, uh, uh, you know, you're going to end up spending two or three times as much per year. It's just kind of silly. And nitric acid, again, most of the time you don't really need nitrogen. You either have the nitrogen that you want in the soil or in your aqueous solution already. So, you know, not a really good option. And then for pH uh, testing, um, you have digital meters. If you do use the digital meters, I don't care if it's a Blue Guardian or a pen or a truncheon or something else, um, you want to make sure that you're uh, calibrating those at least once a month uh, to make sure that they're accurate. You can calibrate them off and suddenly be way off, especially if it's attached to a doser, maybe even every 14 days, because I've watched people completely F their systems uh, by not calibrating or didn't know they were supposed to calibrate it um, and all kinds of silly things that people do. Um, I would steer people away from the test strips, though. Uh, the test strips are much more sensitive to P, uh, temperature and age uh, and getting inaccurate readings. Um, I've seen the test strips be uh, off by as much as a full pH point uh, doing aquarium work. So um, I really don't trust them at all. I mean, if you want a list of all the different kits and stuff for, for your freshwater testing, you can check that out, aptestkit.com. I have a free Excel sheet that has every kind of test that you can think of under the sun for your home aqueous solution if you want to test your own hydroponic or nutrient solution. The next thing we're going to talk about is um, uh, KH or carbonate hardness, which is also called alkalinity. So alkalinity is the stability of the pH or the dissolved carbonate hardness of the water. And this determines how quickly or how willingly the, the water can fluctuate its pH. Um, again, you want to try and keep it above 35 or 40 parts per million at minimum. Um, to make sure that you have proper alkalinity. If you can get it up to like 70 or 80, um, you know, great. But uh, uh, again, bare minimum 35 to 40 um, uh, parts per million on the dissolved carbonate hardness. And you can get these test kits as well. Lamote is another good company out there. Uh, if you aren't familiar with them for home testing, they're out of Canada, very accurate tests. They have a huge range of different tests. Um, you also have um, Hannah, uh, which is another good one, especially for people at home. A lot of people that want to be able to do this are colorblind or have some level of colorblindness. And the Hannah test kits have a digital meter on it that actually gives you a digital number reading on it. They're slightly more expensive, but if you're colorblind, it, it kind of gives you the ability to test all of your stuff back. So definitely check those out as well. A quick information on me, you can check me out at the Growing With Fishes podcast. Um, uh, and uh, we have a class as well if you want to check that out as well uh, apmjclass.com uh, my website's there yeah hopefully that helps you uh, uh, better understand ph at home and how to adjust it in your aqueous solution and have access to the tools you need to be able to get what you need to uh, properly do all of those things in a way that you feel uh, uh, comfortable with at home golden nugget right there Right on. Well, I thank you for stopping by. Uh, and everybody, thanks for hanging out again on another edition of Just One Thing. Um, hit us up. Let us know what you'd like to see. But for now, party on. Cheers. Uh...